Welcome to Hoffman Photography. My name is Rainer. I'm a photographer and photo instructor. In this video, I'll show you the classic landscape technique and why this technique is not at all limited to landscape images. The classic landscape technique is a method to give your two-dimensional images visual depth. It works best with wide-angle lenses of 24 millimeters or less on full-frame cameras, that's 16 millimeters or less on APS-C cameras and 12 millimeters or less on MFT cameras. And it works best in portrait format. Let's have a look how it works. This is a good example of the classic landscape technique. There is a dominant foreground, an interesting object in the middle ground and the horizon in the background. And here is a making of, yes, this is yours truly actually taking a photo. Note how the camera is tilted downward. Thanks to the large angle of view of the 60 millimeter lens on a full frame camera, the rock crevice in the foreground, as well as the horizon and part of the sky are visible in the image. Here it is again. This crevice looks like the Grand Canyon, but actually it's just wide enough to get stuck in it with your hiking boots. Here are two more landscape images that have been composed using the classic landscape technique. I said that the classic landscape technique works best in portrait format, but here is an example in landscape format. Same idea, foreground, middle ground, background, give the image visual depth. And it works for subjects other than landscapes as well, as in these two examples. However, if there is nothing interesting in the foreground, the images look flat as in this example. When you use a classic landscape technique, focusing is critical. When you're focusing on the middle ground, like here, the foreground may not be sharp even at f16 or f22, like so. I faked this image, but it shows that it looks weird when the foreground is not sharp. For maximum depth of field, at a given f-stop, you need to focus according to the so-called hyperfocal distance. The explanation of the hyperfocal distance is beyond the scope of this video, but let me say that you have to focus astonishingly close to the camera. In this example, I focused on a point about here. More about the hyperfocal distance in one of the next videos. I'd like to encourage you to experiment with the classic landscape technique. And remember, it's not for landscapes only. As usual, thanks for watching.